Hello and welcome back. We are playing Cult of the Lamb, and I am talking about some social psychological principles that go into the makings of cults and into our understanding of cults and cult-like behavior. So we just finished last time on my first try. I'm so proud of myself on hardest difficulty to the point where I want to make sure that I actually said it. Yes, to extra hard difficulty. First try defeated Abaduceus despite having not played this game in any sort of meaningful way for months. Um, <clears throat> so I'm very proud of myself. And as I mentioned last time, I'm not going to be doing nearly as good of voices this time because it was a really dumb idea in terms of my throat. Uh, so here we go. We are going to start this video. And again, we're going to talk about some of the norms that come along as a result of our understanding of cult. So first, convert our follower. Please spare me. Convert me to your cult. I will follow your teachings faithfully. So now what we've done is we, this follower is now indebted to us. We have saved their lives in the same sort of way that the old one, uh, the one who waits below has saved our lives. Uh, now the blueprint, this would be fun because it gives us decorations. This is important because it gives us food uh, and this will eventually give us money. Now, as I mentioned previously, I don't like having my my choices forced when I am going out on runs and being forced to take the runs that give me food and to take the directions that give me food. So I am going to get some, <clears throat> excuse me, get some food so that I am less likely to have to do that. And then we leave and look, we see a circle that we've already seen below. And something happens. Boom. And you'll notice that's divided into fourths, so it automatically gives us a general sense of what it is we have to do without the game having to tell us what we're going to have to do. I love that sort of, of communication where they don't have to directly tell us a thing that we just learn it on our own from the game itself. I think it's real cool. All right. So we get all of this cool stuff. We've cleansed the non-believers and we have converted them to our cult. And now we should have done everything that Rakow told us to do uh, when we first got here. <clears throat> and of course, that was our initial goal, right? Our initial goal was to do all of the things we were told to do and to be good little cultists. So let's go visit Rakow. We did return to more followers. I am re relieved to see you made it safely. I'm going to speak him, I'm going to try to speak him like I do um, without something in my voice, but the way that I might do like Dracula. I am relieved to see you made it safely. And you have not returned alone. You convinced more to join our flock. Let us, I interrupted him, let us indoctrinate this new convert so that we may continue. And so I think I am going to make a cult of monkeys, except for the uh, the priests of the old faith. I think that Abaduceus just deserves, after sacrificing themselves for for their god, only to be dragged into our cult. I think that they deserve special treatment. Uh, so I am going to leave the follower form alone, but you'll notice that I have now gained a new follower form somewhere. No? Oh, there it is. I have gained a new follower form, but... Oh no! Oh no, why did you turn green? You were yellow, and so yellow you shall remain. Hey. Sorry about that. Um, and so, oh, great. You're harder to level up. Uh, but you like being sick and you heal faster. Great. But harder to level up. Come on. I guess I guess that kind of makes sense, seeing as this, this cynical person has just jumped from one god to another. I kind of, I actually kind of like that now that I think of it a little bit more. So, join us. And since I have them getting me stone, you can get me wood. Followers will either work or worship. Worshipping followers generate devotion for you to collect. But to collect devotion, you require a shrine. Alrighty then, let's make ourselves a shrine. Do I have everything I need? I need 30 coins. Yes, money. And this is, I can't put this anywhere but here. So, I'm going to build ourselves a shrine. Everybody love me. 
love me. That's right. <clears throat> Praise me. Your followers can now worship you. Here is a new follower. Assign them to worship at the shrine. Then collect the devotion your followers generate at the shrine to unlock new divine inspiration. <laughs> There's going to be no consistency in anybody's accent. I don't know why I bother doing them other than they are fun. I will spare you, and you're already a monkey. Look at you, you good little cynical monkey. <laughs> oh no. So many cynical followers. And you're going to make me lose faith. Actually, I don't think I have faith yet, so that's okay. Hello, you little cynical monkey. Cynical monkey, go worship me. Collect devotion from your shrine. Once you collect enough, you will unlock divine inspiration. The more followers worshiping at your shrine, the faster they will fill it up. Um, if the shrine is full, they will stop worshiping until it is empty. Once you have collected divine inspiration, unlock new buildings for your cult through the shrine. So, this is going to worship me now. Yes, that's right. Worship me. I am your god. But of course, now I have nothing else to do, really. And so, this again is a time where you can go and you can bust things down. Or you can go out, depending on just what it is you want to do and what sort of fun you have in your gameplay loop. Now, the reason I'm going uh, and doing some of this is that I um, wanted to take some time to tell you all about some of the norms that we're seeing just in the early parts of this game. And one of the big ones, actually, let's, let's go fight and talk about this. It's probably much more interesting for you to watch me fight and die. Well, oh, I guess I can't do that. Do I have to collect all of it or can I just collect a little? Oh, okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. Unlock the divine inspiration and I can build myself the temple. I was going to say, that's awful. All right, let's do what Ratau tells us to do and unlock ourselves a temple. See, and I'm going to take this farming path, just so you all know, because I hate having to, to find some food. Uh, I can receive more of that. And now let's build ourselves a temple. Uh, and this structure, I do have what I need to build the temple. Can I place it here? Excellent, excellent. The trees are a little bit in the way, but that's okay. We'll eventually cut down all of the trees because deforestation is part of our cult. Um... So we'll just make sure that they get out of the way. But I like the temple here. It makes me happy. The temple is the center of your cult. From there, you will preach sermons to grow stronger and perform rituals to mold the fragile mind of your followers. You are responsible for the faith of your cult. If it falls too low, your followers will dissent against you and eventually leave. Your followers are ready to hear your word. Show them that you are their great leader. Preach a sermon from within your temple. Hey, stop it. All right, let's go preach a sermon within our temple and tell them how wonderful I am. You all come here. I am wonderful. Let me tell you all about the things we believe that make us special. Yes, that's right. We are special. We know things that other people do not. Through the faith of your followers, you go stronger. Performing servants will draw power from them and allow you to unlock new abilities, weapons, and curses. Followers with a higher loyalty level will generate more devotion. Therefore, the more followers you have and the more loyal they are, the quicker you will gain new abilities. Um, and so right now the only thing I can do is heart to the face, but this gives me a half a heart, so I am less likely to die repeatedly. Which is kind of a nice thing when you think about it. Uh, I don't want to die repeatedly. Well, I mean, it's hilarious when I do, but uh, it's not really what I'm going for. Alright, Ratau, come tell me what to do next. You were amazing to behold. A natural leader. I see why you were chosen. If you are to guide your cult, you will need to declare doctrine so that you, they might obey you. Return to the land of the old faith 
and seek out commandment stone fragments. With these, you will be able to declare new doctrine. All right. Cool. Gave a sermon. Um, can I bless people yet? Can I be like, hey, worship me? Mm, nope. Go eat, sleep. How hungry is are everybody? You're not hungry right now. Good job, people. Good job not being hungry and messing with me. That's fantastic. So I'm going to keep my food right the way it is. Collect all this stuff. Um, nobody poops yet, which is good. Y'all y'all are having a little bit of trouble. We'll get you some fiber in just a little bit. So now, we will go back into the dark wood. And let's talk about this norm of reciprocity. <clears throat> now, the norm of reciprocity is going to sound really bad. Right? It's going to sound like a thing that I say that it's like, oh, people are awful. Um, oh, yay, I love the axe. The axe makes me happy. What is this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Entering the lands of the Bishop of Fleshy. For those who do not follow the ways of the old faith will be destroyed. Yep, I'm going to destroy all... Oh. Because of the way that I have set up my my custom things, it's going to be much harder to destroy that uh, than usual. I'm going to have to, I can't hack at it because of the buttons that I've made because of my, my attack and my interact. But that's okay. It still allows me to not die and to not ruin things uh, throughout the game. So... It's, it's good, because otherwise I'm dashing with the wrong button, and that this is a game that definitely requires dashing, or at least for me. I mean, I guess there could be a play style that is not dashing-based, but if there is, I don't know it. Because these guys are all dashing, so I kind of have to respond in time. Uh, and there are certain weapons that you just can't do anything but dash, in my opinion. And so... Oh, good. Little stars. Let's go over here. Yes, I will absolutely lend myself to the draw of the cards. Better chests or deal damage to all enemies. Let's get... Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Whoops. I clicked the wrong button. I guess we are dealing damage to enemies when we are down to half a heart. Alright, so... <laughs> so let's talk about this norm of reciprocity. The norm of reciprocity... Yeah, I wrecked out. I'm glad I found you. I bring good news. The one who waits is pleased with your progress and wishes to grant you a crown ability. Oh, yes. That looks painful bleeding from the eyeball. I am so blessed. So now I can hold Y to aim. And they're going to give me these little red dots. It's like, oh, yeah. Yes! I need to get better at that. Enemies you slay will drop further. Collect this to replenish your curses. Fervor is the righteous anger earned by striking down non-believers and works like ammunition for your curses. Not like power, right? It's fueling you. Fervor will drop when you slay an enemy. Collecting it refuels your curses. Like, I don't view it as much like ammo. Uh, and if you, you see that line there, if you can perfectly land it on that line, it will actually be explosive, and I am terrible at doing so. I'm glad this room lets you refill your fervor a little bit. But I forgot that it's only a little bit, so I was messing around too much. There we go. There we go. Filled all of that up. Okay, little guy. Nope. Oh, what, what's here? Ow, no, 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 no. So you foolishly persist, little lamb. I hear your lies, and I smell your fear. The red crown rises again. But what an unworthy bearer it has. I'm trying, trying to do that voice with, without hurting my throat. Um... I don't know how voice actors do it. Like, how do they maintain those sorts of voices for extended periods of time? Like, what they're doing to their throat is so hard. Much respect to them. It probably involves a lot of honey. Or 
something. Or maybe they're just damaging your vocal cords. Uh, I still don't actually know. All I know is that hurt, and I can't maintain it. Ah, no! Okay, Whew. That was bad. That was bad. Okay. Bishops of the Old Faith are, uh, are brutal bunches. What was I talking about? Ah, I was talking about the norm of reciprocity. Um, oh! Got some pretty stuff. I am so bad at designing pretty, pretty cults. Like, I like managing the cultists, but I'm really bad at making things artful. What do we pick up? Reveal the map. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. That's going to make this a little bit easier. So now here we go. I've been talking about choices and which way I have to go. Uh, and so now you can see what's going on here. Here I can buy a cultist. Here I can fight for a cultist. But something weird might happen here. Uh, let's go that way. Because I don't have a lot of money and I want to keep it for other things. Um, so, hey. Receive challenge. What is my challenge? That's Ratu instead of Ratau. Hello there, Crusader. If you make it through the next few combat rooms with nary a scratch, taking no damage, I'll rustle you up a reward. But if you fail, then alas, not for you. Okay. No damage it is. Well, I mean, I'm already trying to be really careful about that because I don't have very many hearts. So let's let's see how that goes. Hey, birdie. Yes, give me meat. Excellent. But I want a new follower. Followers give me all sorts of good things. And right now I only have three. And I want them all to worship me. The worm, it is hungry. It feeds. It partakes of our flesh. But that is the price for safety. For we gladly give. For that, we gladly give all that we have. Uh, no. Yes, you're going to give all that you have. You're going to give your life to me, not to the woman. Mine. All mine. And if you notice there, actually, the norm of reciprocity is there as well. So, it, the norm of reciprocity is just the idea that in our society, and in many societies, although not in all, there's this idea that if somebody does something for you, you need to do something back for them. And it's not necessarily perfectly explicit, right? It's not that people say, hey, if you do a thing, I'll do things back. This actually happens subconsciously. Whether we are thinking about it or not, whether we like the person or not. So first, let's rescue this dude. I like that I have to swipe my weapon uh, at, the first, at the follower in order to save them. That is a quirk of the way that the controls are set up. Not because I simply like swiping and scaring the followers before they come, uh, but it is a cool side effect of intimidation. All right, let's see if we can fight our way to the final boss. So yeah, it is It is a nifty side effect. Steal all of your devotion, just like I intend to steal your followers. Um, and if you haven't seen, you can if you're careful, before the birds fly away, you can murder them and get some meat. And that meat is really valuable, so. Whoa! Alright, so this room gives me a different flaming shot. And I can actually show you the reason that I have to have custom, uh, a set of custom controls is this right here. So, the control set was either one that was not set up the way that the switch was, or it was one that for this, I would have to use the button uh, that used my curse in order to recycle it. And recycling it is valuable. It gives you money. And especially early game, you really need money. Uh, and so I set up a custom control set just for that, just so that I could get money and re recycle instead of waste things. Eons ago, these lands were rife with the gods and their adherents. What befell this pantheon? Alas, tis the nature of beasts to forget, and of gods to be forgotten. Mayhap they laughed, mayhap they slept, mayhap they devoured, and were devoured in turn. Those you who remain spread roots, spun webs, molded this world to meet them and theirs. Twere a land of many gods once, 
hundred. Now? Now it's going to be a world of my god and my god only. Bam! Commandment stone fragment. You have found enough fragments to form a commandment stone. Commandment stones are used to declare new doctrines for your cults to follow. Use the altar in your temple to declare a new doctrine whenever you form a new commandment stone. Aye, aye, Captain. I will absolutely do that. Now, I don't think I've had a bunch of combat rooms yet, so I need, I need another one for Ratu to come. Um, is this where I can go down? No, 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 no. Okay. It says that there's a room below me, but not that I can get to it from there. I have trouble reading mini maps sometimes. No, don't hurt me! Yes! Why aren't you just something? You've completed the challenge. Hmm, what should you get? I think this is a decent reward. Oh, yay! He gave me... <laughs> he gave me decorations. I think that might be all he gives you. Um, but I don't know, because I, I, I only sometimes complete his challenges. Alright. Now let's go back to talking about this normal bus atrocity then. Um, uh, that's the big boss. What? Is there a room I haven't been to? Did I somehow miss a room? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's the exit room. Good job, Jedi. Good job. So let's go here first and collect our cards. Tell me, Lamb, do you believe in destiny immutable? No. I will make my own destiny. Ooh, I love poison. We are going to do poison. And I also love that it says deals instead of chance of, but because I like guarantees. All is as it should be, as it ever was, as it always will be. Yes, that's absolutely right. And the way that it will be is me kicking butt and taking names and talking about the normal breath of property. Uh, so again, this idea of tit for tat uh, and therefore the norm of reciprocity, it strikes us as wrong, right? It strikes us as that we should just do for things for others and it's sure they may do things back for us. But it feels wrong to explicitly say that we are going to do things in the expectation that people will do things back for us. Hey, where's my poison? Are you unpoisonable? Maybe. But we subconsciously do this whether we want to or not. So one of the cool experiments on the norm of reciprocity that I wanted to talk about, actually we've done now. It actually was, was relatively simple in terms of its execution. So what they did was they brought people into the lab, and you had to sit out in the waiting room doing some paperwork. And you either sat out with somebody, so you had somebody else in the waiting room with you, and you either sat out with somebody who was kind of just there, or somebody who was really obnoxious. They were loud, and they were jerks. Uh, they... <clears throat> ah! Uh, and, and you were designed not to like them, right? Ow! Whew. You were designed not to like this person. And so, in this study, they first had you do these paperwork and you spent time with this person. And so I'm going to, this person is someone who I should not like, but I'm going to because they're going to dedicate themselves to me. Be mine! That's right. I am sending you to the netherworld. Um, very bush seeds, blueprints. Berries. Do I have any berry bush seeds? There we go. Open inventory. Um, I have 26 of them. Uh, let's get some more food. Hooray! I am wonderful. Um, and so you were really designed not to like this person and not to want to spend time with them. And then what happens is that person leaves the room. Uh, and they go out and they get a soda for themselves. And when they come back, they've also brought you a soda. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, yeah, continue. Oh, we're, we're visiting our benefactor. Very good, my vessel. 
It seems I chose well when I kept you from death. His voice is worse than the throat hurt. I'll be watching your every move. Do not disappoint me. Yeah, you know, no pressure or anything. <laughs> your god is going to be watching your very move. No pressure. No pressure. It's all good. No biggie. <clears throat> Alright, and so now my followers are real cranky. Um, nope, I'm not talking to you until I'm done with my sermon. Real cranky followers. So, let's do a sermon. <clears throat> I have priorities, man. You and your friends are really cranky, and I need to make you happy. Everybody be happy. Oh, I should have recruited that other follower first. Oh, well, oopsie doopsie. Uh, all right, but I can declare a new crown ability, and I have to decide what it is. Oh, I automatically get bonfire ritual. Never mind. So we're going to do a bonfire ritual. Kapow! New crown ability, bonfire ritual. Um, but I do not have bones, and they haven't even taught me what bones are yet. Oh, I bet this is where they teach me what bones are. Um, because I go to do this ritual, and it's like, nope, no ritual for you. Okay. So, are you going to tell me what these rituals are? Yeah. Preaching sermons, performing rituals, and providing for the needs of your followers will keep their faith high. The bones of your enemies are required to perform such rituals. Destroy their skeletons to gather bones. Return to the lands of the old faith. Gather bones from fallen enemies. Recruit more followers and return to perform a ritual here in the temple. Perform rituals in the temple. These usually raise faith or help you solve some problem in the cult. Rituals are performed using the bones of your fallen enemies. After slaying a non-believer, desecrate their bodies and <laughs> gather their bones. I love that it lets you know exactly what you're doing when you gather their bones. Like, there is no question about the fact that this is desecration. And use them to perform dark rituals at your temple. It's, there's no qualms about being like, you are a jerk and you're okay with being a jerk. All right, so let's... What, what is the other option? Sleepy. Oh, yeah... You know what? I am going to get them sleeping bags first. Because I do have plenty of food to feed them, but I don't have any way to solve the fact that um, that they get real cranky if they don't have any place to sleep. So, whoops. How do I... How do I... Okay, what do you want? Don't hate me, don't hate me. When times are tough, we can cook grass meals. Followers won't like it, but it be starving. Try it now. Yep. So this will improve faith if I do what this person has asked me to do. And so I will cook one grassy meal. It might make people illness, ill. Um, but let's also cook some things that they will actually like. And do our cooking mini game. Excellent. Yeah, cooking mini game. Success. I didn't mess up any of your food. Look at that. I made food for y'all. Tummy and you. Indoctrinate. Please spare me. I will, but I'm going to turn you into a monkey. I hope you don't mind. Uh, but a monkey is what you need to be from now on. You can be a purple monkey. Uh, and so she is 15% harder to level up and loses 10 faith when falling ill. So we've got our purple monkey going on here. Except the purple monkey. I love you, purple monkey. And purple monkey, you will worship me. Yes, and you, you get to, you get to keep it because you, uh, you left your leader and came to me instead because you didn't want to die. Convert me to your cult. I will follow your teachings faithfully. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Right up until somebody tries to murder you, and then you will stop. Um, you ignore dissenters, though. Oh, I like you already. Um, but you generate generate less devotion. So if you're going to generate less devotion, you are going instead to cut me some wood. Give me wood instead. Um, <clears throat> far better this way. Now, um, I can't do anything useful with you. All right, so the only thing I can do is I can build decorations. Do decorations influence my faith at all? They don't 
here to make people more faithful. Uh, I've already made the shrine and the temple, so yeah, the, really the only thing I can do at this point is clean up their poop. Unsanitary conditions that your cult will cause your followers to become sick. If a follower becomes sick, assign them to bed rest or they could die. Resting will allow them to slowly recover. Vomit and poop and dead bodies cause illness to spread quickly throughout your cult. Cleaning messes and burying bodies will prevent illnesses. Yes. So now I have poop. And now I have to pay attention to their poop. And I just realized the thing that I want to do is I have four cultists. Or five cultists. So I want to see how many sleeping bags I can create. Can I create all five? I can. Excellent. I just ran out of money. But... Oh. But... I can also get faith for helping people with their jobs. Nope, nope. No, no, no. I want to build. Because it makes you happy when I am here and doing the things that you are doing. And I need to make you happy. There you go. Look, you all have places to sleep. Look at how happy you should be. Happy, happy cultists. You all have places to sleep, and so I'm going to go back into <laughs> Catch the Bones of the Enemy. That's where we're going now, collecting some bones. So yeah, so let's go back to the study that they were doing. <laughs> so the study they did, remember, they had uh, either a guy who was a jerk or a guy who was uh, just General Dude. And then they had General Dude leave, and they either came back with a soda for themselves, or they brought back a soda for both themselves and for the participant in the study. So if you remember, the guy the guy who's being a jerk, he's what's known as a confederate. He is just acting, creating the situation, uh, setting the scene, if you will. And so... And so what they were measuring, though, had, it wasn't the stuff on the, on the surveys, right? That's not what they're looking at. Uh, instead, that person asks for donations to, I can't remember what it is, I, I think it might have been like buying a raffle ticket or asking for donations or something, but they ask for the, for the participant to do something that required them giving some money. And what they found was that, first of all, and this is not going to be surprising, that when we like the person, we are more likely to give them some money. Pow, pow, pow. Uh, and donate to the things that they ask us to donate about. We're going to buy more raffle tickets than we would otherwise. But what they also found was that when the person had given the participant a soda, they also bought more raffle tickets or were willing to donate more money. In fact, uh, they were willing to donate more financially, to give more financially than that person had given to them, right? Than the value of a soda. So if you looked at the average donation amount, it was actually greater than the value of the soda that they had received. So it was going even above and beyond because the point wasn't to pay the person back financially. It was to pay them back behaviorally. They had done something for the participant and therefore the participant does something in return. Uh, and that's really the norm of reciprocity in a nutshell. So how does that relate to the cult of the lamb? Well, it, it's probably it's fairly obvious, right? So the first time that we see the norm of reciprocity has to do with the one who waits below. There's, there's nothing to indicate that we worship the one who waits below or that we care. They're just going around and killing all of the land, right? Everybody who's like us. Uh, and yet, the one who waits below, and we as the player have this as well, uh, the one who waits below does something for us. Uh, crit or more fervor, more fervor. Uh, the one who waits below has done something for us. They have brought us back to life. And so even if we don't like the things that we need to do or we don't benefit from the things that we need to do in order to create this cult, we are still inclined to do them because the one who waits below has done something for us. Right? Because of the norm of reciprocity. They have done something for us and now we need to do something for them in return. And they, they can even sort of have that expectation, ow, have that expectation that, yeah, we're probably going to do this 
simply from that norm and not in a cynical sort of way, but just in a this is the way society works sort of way. And cults in general take advantage of this. Uh, what are we saying? Yay, my weapon, which is already kind of weak, is going to be stronger. Uh, cults in general take advantage of this sort of thing. Um, how much money do I have? I don't know if I have a lot of money or not. Because um, I can buy a follower and then, you know what, let's, well, let's get them so. <clears throat> uh, and so cults take advantage of this in a number of ways. But one of the ways they often do it is by finding individuals who need something, right? Who have some sort of tangible need that they then provide for that person. And what a lot of people need is just someone to understand them or someone to care about them and a sense of community. Um, but also, you may see that cults form around groups that provide some element of charity, that provide some amount of financial support or support for driving a person someplace, things like that. Uh, and you would see this. Oh, come on, Leshy, I'm in the middle of a conversation here. Oh, it's, it's all three of you. So it is true, the red crown sits upon the brow of another. Yeah, on my brow. But how? We did everything we could to... It matters not. We need not bother Shamuro with this. Deal with it, brother. As you command, my sister. <clears throat> yep, we're gonna we're gonna send send our minions. Never deal with it directly unless I have to. Because I'm scared of a lamb. That's right. This lamb is powerful. All right. So they will often provide something that uh, that the person needs. And again, it doesn't have to be a financial need. It doesn't have to be a tangible need. The or yeah, a tangible need, the norm of reciprocity doesn't function like that. It doesn't function in a sort of tit-for-tat, equal-for-equal sort of way. Instead, it is functioning in a, you did something for me, and now I feel I should do something for you in return sort of way. And so you see that in the development of cults, but also in the development of cult-like groups. Groups where you see that sort of, that sort of, oh gosh, I have very few hearts left that I didn't notice. Uh, that sort of dedication on a deeper level, on a level where you kind of wonder why you're seeing that level of dedication. I am in so much trouble and I didn't even notice. Ah! And you see that same norm of reciprocity in other parts in this game too. For example, spare me and I will worship you, right? You're, you're getting them to join your cult simply because you've spared them, but also the ones that you've saved join your cult simply because they're grateful that they've been saved. Uh, these are all elements of the norm of reciprocity, and they just make in so much intuitive sense to us that we don't really notice the transactional nature of them on our own, usually. All right, let's go in. Please give me something that gives me hearts, better chests, or blue hearts. All right, blue hearts it is. I really need those blue hearts because I am down to half a heart. <laughs> and I'm on the hard difficulty. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, no. When you die, they, they start not believing in you anymore because you, stink, because you stink. It's bad to die. Oh, good. Oh, thank goodness. It gave me again. The one who waits below has giveth instead of take it away. Uh, that's the other thing when it comes to cults, especially those that uh, worship uh, deities or other uh, intangibles, is you can start attributing a lot of randomness, because the world is, at its core, random. But you can attribute a lot of random things to the, to the deity itself, right? To the one who waits below. Uh, and now you feel even more indebted to the one who waits below as a result. And are more likely to be willing to do other things 
for them. All right, Crusaders lay two. My speed goes down, but my damage goes up. Uh, I am okay with the loss of speed. And so I'm going to recycle that and get some money, right? Waste not, want not. Uh, now we are going to get ourselves <clears throat> another follower because followers are a necessary component of this game. Fortunately, we don't have to see the dialogue every single time we get a follower, right? They, ah, I'm in so much trouble. I need to be more careful. So now I've been martyred. It's uh, not as bad as it could be. It takes away some of my stuff. The thing that's actually worse about my martyrdom is, uh, yes, we are back up and running. Sorry about that. I disconnected and then reconnected, which, which is fantastic. I don't know why. Uh, so, but, hey, we're back. Let's have some fun. The one who waits below tells us to continue on undaunted. <laughs> that is a perfect message for what just happens to us with losing. Each time you are brought down, you rise again stronger. They are speaking directly to my soul. All right, so I am going to come and rise again stronger. Look at how much they hate me right now. Uh, but I am going to cook them some meals. I have some hearty meat broth. I'm going to cook them a couple of those. But I also need to cook some for... I need to have enough that each follower can eat one, I think. Right? Um, now I'm going to go around catching critters. There's not really much else to do other than gathering resources here. Oh, yeah, and receive my... Let's see our divine inspiration. Let's get a farm going on. We need a farm. Desperately need a farm. Now, at first, I'm going to have to deal with my farm all by myself, right? I'm going to have to. Ah, stop it. Um, and I like to put the farm over here. So let's get some farm plaques going on. Let's see if I have what it takes to build the farm plaque. I have a feel. So, one, two... It. Okay, as you can see, I'm having some trouble getting it placed. For, oh, there we go. Now I remember how to control it. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Oh, I think I was just finalizing what I was saying about the norm of reciprocity and how you can attribute a large number of things to, to the one who waits below. And especially when you have a cult, you tend to have somebody who's, oh, the rain. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that the rain. Uh, no, I'm not talking to you because I think you might be mad at me. And so I am first going to, I'm not going to talk to you until I have done my ritual and until I have done my sermon. Uh, I, tend not, I tend to try to not talk to my followers while I think they are angry with me. Um, and to wait and make them happy instead. And then talk to them. I can talk to happy followers. It seems like the best thing to do. Um, and so now I have to pick between Curse of the Horde and Bane Weapons. And I like Poison a lot. So we're going to go with Bane Weapons. Because I love me some poison. Uh, and then we're going to go up even more. See, having more, one of the reasons I like having more followers, especially in the early game, is being able to get more of that sweet, sweet experience for the, the between session leveling up. Indoctrinating followers is well and good. But there is so much more that you can take from them. You <laughs> love how cynical it is. Give them gifts, complete quests, and perform blessings for them, and you will increase their loyalty to you. Once they are totally loyal to you, they will give you everything they own. 
watch as I show you. You, follower, come back in here. Which one is he? Oh, yay! My original monkey! He threw him a gift. And so, increase a follower's loyalty to level them up, and they will reward you with devotion and a commandment stone fragment. Each time a follower levels up, they will generate additional devotion. When at a sermon or worshipping at the shrine, so be sure to cultivate their loyalty. To increase their loyalty, you can give a follower a blessing once a day when you interact with them. You can also give them gifts, complete quests for them, perform sermons, and many other actions. So I can do all sorts of things. The more loyal followers you have, the stronger you'll become. I have much to teach you, but I am old and grow weary. Visit me at my home, and I will show you how to harness the true power of the Red Crown. So now we gain access to going to his home, the Lonely Shack. Uh, which we will do next time. I'm going to stop here having talked about the norm of reciprocity and how we see it presenting itself in the Cult of the Lamb. Uh, for those of you who might be watching on Twitch but not chatting, don't worry. Um, as I mentioned last time, we are going to stop here, but we are going to come back. I'm going to continue our discussion of cults by talking about a specific cult, and that tells us a lot of what we know about cults today. Right, so... We're going to turn our attention to that cult, talk about some of the cult leaders and what happened, uh, and use that to transition into a discussion of a topic known as cognitive dissonance. So, thank you all very much for being here and for either watching the stream, hello, or watching the video, and I hope to see you next time.